welcome to my studio. Uh, here I want to show you how I paint uh, from uh, working from photographs to produce this lovely sunset view of uh, evening sails over Paper Court Sailing Club. Starting off with uh, a drawing, pencil drawing on a board which has been tinted a soft grey colour. You'll see now how important this is because I'm going to start straight away by putting in the, uh, the strong bright backlit sail. This wouldn't really be possible working on a, a white canvas as you can imagine. Makes an interesting start and I hope you will enjoy watching me paint and create this lovely scene in my studio from photographs uh, taken on a visit to Paper Court. Sit back uh, and enjoy the experience. I won't be going through fine details of everything I've done um, because this is a, a studio painting rather than a formal lesson. Now that I've painted the boat itself, I will start by putting in the sky, again concentrating on the light with this uh, yellow halo from where the sun um, is going to, uh, the sunlight will, will come, and also marking in initially the sunlight as it's going to fall onto the water. This tactic this technique I really enjoy and you can almost see the painting start to develop at a very early stage. Putting in some warm oranges to establish uh, where the sunlight will fall. This isn't the actual sunlight on the water, it's just showing um, where, the, where the light is falling from, from the sky. Next I need to establish the colour of the uh, sails of the other boats but these will be softer as they are in partial shade and I don't want them to dominate over the main subject. So here I'm using a, a sort of warm grey shade uh, for the sails on these uh, dinghies that are over in the far distance. This also helps create a sense of recession in the painting and uh, keeps, the, keeps the, the correct mood and atmosphere. Now I move on to put in the reflections or almost shadows of the boats uh, into the water um, before finishing off the first uh, layer of paint in the water and filling it all in. Uh, as you can see this, this is only the, uh, the first stage of, of painting this type of water and uh, does take uh, quite a while to complete. The initial colour of the, of the water is fairly dark uh, and this will be key when we come later on to putting in uh, the, uh, a suggestion of, of waves and sparkling light onto water. As with painting the sail against a dark uh, canvas, uh, it's virtually impossible to paint, well I find it impossible, to paint uh, sparkling light unless you've got some dark colour for that light to reverberate against uh, and that's what gives this lovely effect uh, and hopefully at the end of the day will create uh, a really beautiful and atmospheric painting.
Once I've reached the stage of being fairly happy with this initial blocking of the darks, I start to mark in where the light is going to fall onto the water. Uh, again, this is just a first marking in of light colour. And you can see it, it's even at this stage, uh, it, it is a fairly dramatic effect. Now that the darks of the water have all been established, I move on to putting in the sky and getting the whole canvas covered with colour. Just rub out a little bit of the charcoal and then start painting in the top uh, of the sky with these sort of warm blue mauve colours. That's bringing the whole thing a little bit more to life. There's a cloud bank below where the sun is. The sun was sort of sinking into this evening cloud. So I need to establish that cloud with a, with a, a darker sort of um, warm, warm brown to warm mauve sort of shade. As you can see, this is a sort of process of uh, initially scrubbing in the paint uh, with a first uh, colour. And then I will need to adjust that colour as I go forward to gradually pick out the sort of shading uh, clouds that will be uh, essential to creating the space for the sun to sort of sink softly behind them uh, and give the whole painting it, its, its atmosphere. Again, this is the, the, the first layer of paint Once I've established this, this uh, feeling of where the clouds are in the sky and the initial light, I like, because the oils stay wet, I like to continue to paint the sky um, and ideally complete this area in one wet in the first painting session. So you see here I'm putting in uh, some more golds uh, to bring a bit more of a light halo to where the sun is going to sort of be peeping through that cloud. A little bit more mauve into the top of the sky. This is a very instinctive form of painting and uh, from, from having worked many sunsets and many skies and also having a, a good understanding of, of how the light behaves in the sky. You see that a little bit of, of light will catch the top of what might be vapour trails coming across and starts to build up a feeling of a central core of light where the sun um, is just behind that cloud. I love this sort of painting, uh, especially when I'm working skies. For me, this is the very essence of, um, of painting in oils, whether it's in the studio as we are here, or even out on location, although working a sunset out on location requires uh, considerable speed and dexterity um, because um, the sun uh, disappears behind those clouds very quickly. At this stage I leave the paint overnight to go sticky and then come to it in the morning to start adding some of the finer details, tweaking bits of the sky, neatening up around the edges of the sails, uh, just generally pulling the, the painting together um, before taking the step to the final step to finish painting the water and bring some sparkle and light to the water. Again, this is a fairly instinctive part of the process. Sometimes less is more, sometimes you want uh, quite a lot of light on the water, but um, 
the more light you put in, the less dark there is for it to reverberate against. And sometimes you can you can find yourself uh, with a little bit of overkill at this stage. So I like to take it relatively slowly, thinking my way around the picture and adding with uh, very light pressure on the brush, uh, a feeling of light on the water and also ripples on the water. It's coming together quite nicely at this stage. Just uh, enjoying putting in these final brush strokes. <clears throat> Stop and have a think. Look at any areas where there might be a, a, an unpainted bit of canvas that uh, I'm, I'm not happy to leave, although I do leave patches of... Uh, of of the tinted canvas, uh, they can, that can be quite effective and add to the overall composition. That's coming along nicely. I had a suggestion of a figure in these distant dinghies. Just a, a, a single brush stroke sometimes is, is all that that requires, otherwise um, you say too much and uh, you don't leave anything for the, the viewer of the painting to discover um, when, they, when they look at the finished work. As I'm coming towards the end of the painting, I just want to add a little bit more detail uh, into this foreground dinghy. Um, at this stage, that there doesn't, I haven't put any of the rigging in, or any of the markings on the sail. So, using a fairly fine brush, uh, that is something I do towards the the very end of the painting. And again, just putting in the essential lines, not every line of rigging. Um, leave a bit for the imagination for the viewer to enjoy. I've now put in as much detail as I feel is necessary and I'm going to uh, sign the painting at the bottom um, in uh, with my small fine detail brush. I like to have a painted signature. Um, I think this is uh, rather nice. Now the painting has dried and been varnished. It is available direct from my studio for you to purchase. Uh, if this is something that uh, you would like to own, please get in touch.